I'm Eric Barnes with The Daily Memphian, and welcome to The Sidebar, a weekly show on the community, arts, culture, and more. Today, very pleased to be talking to Philip Ashley of Philip Ashley Chocolates. So stay with us for a conversation with Philip. And a special thanks to our sponsor of The Sidebar, Trezevant Manor. Philip, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Looking um, to and I should tell everyone if they heard the music, um, we are still at the, in Crosstown on the 10th floor of the Central Atrium as we were flooded out of our office. We hope maybe soon we'll have a, other places that we'll be recording, but still if music or dogs or anything starts, it's all fine. Um, great environment though yeah, and a great view. I know, it's so great up here. It dry, I mean, it's horrible for Natalie Van Gundy, our producer, because she's got to deal with all the sound stuff, but I'd love doing it up here, it's great. Um, so for people who don't know, mm-hmm. which is fewer and fewer, but mm-hmm. people don't know what you do, how sure. do you describe what you do? Uh, simply as a designer chocolatier. So um, we tell stories that taste like chocolate. I've always been a lover of storytelling, whether it's books, media, movie, uh, and just found a way to do that with our chocolate and, and specifically luxury bonbons, uh, caramels, turtles, all of those different things. Yeah. And selling based here in Memphis, but selling all over the country, all yes, over the world. Yes, yes. Or, yeah, we ship international, yeah. uh, domestic, lo- and and deliver and 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 locally as well. And how again for people who don't know the story? How why why chocolate for you? How did how did uh, that happen? Yeah, just one had a dream about doing something different. Was in the food world, loved cooking, grew up around food cooking, um, worked in the consumer packaged goods industry okay. for a number of years. So CPG, product development, packaging design, engineering, okay. that kind of world. And really was just like, well, how do I merge food with a product uh, yeah. in, in terms of not inside a restaurant, but how do I get it to Eric if Eric's in LA or if he's in New York or whatever, or if he wants to send something to Spain. Right. And so that just kind of that culmination of like, what would be cool to make um, an emphasis on the cool part, uh, something that's fun, something that's different that you, you know, who knows a chocolatier, you know, in, in like, uh, you know, that's not something you encounter think, every day. I'm 56 years and I know one. Yeah. Right, right. That's, and that was the thing. It's like, how cool would it be to say, hey, I'm a chocolatier. And that's kind of how it started. Yeah. Uh, and then it just evolved into more of a, wow, I, I think this is really what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and it just, and, yeah. you know, studied, learned, uh, researched, and, and then began to kind of develop my own style, my own voice. And here we are. It, it's, it is interesting. You mentioned design and consumer design mm-hmm. because part of what you do, I mean, I guess it's first and foremost the chocolate yeah, yeah, yeah. and the food and the, yeah. the taste. Absolutely. But design at every level yeah. and branding is so important to us. The, the design of the chocolates, right. the packaging, the whole thing is, yeah. is a big part of it. Again, I'm not taking away from what the quality of the product. No, no, the no, core, absolutely. But so, and did you come from a design background, like formally, or you just um, kind of it, it's, got I, evolved, I, I came from an art background. Okay. And so, you know, grew up around art, really, you know, studied in school some, and actually have a chemistry um, education. But, uh, <laughs> so it's like but the perfect so mix. Does, right, it's it does so mix, funny. absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. so left and right. Um, but wanting to do something that kind of merged all those things. And, and as you hear people say, you eat with your eyes, I really think people eat with eat the experience or taste an experience yeah. and so it's about as you said the packaging the uh textiles used and the uh colors that are involved in painting the chocolate and how it's delivered and all of the things that go into it and so yeah really spent a lot of time trying to understand you know how do we brand how do we communicate and that's ultimately what we're doing we're communicating you know, to the Natalie's and Eric's of the world, yeah. uh, you know, through our chocolate. Yeah. When did you, when did all that happen? Like when, when was the company founded? Yeah. How yeah. Did yeah. So officially time? started 2012, um, but didn't move into a facility or our first facility until 2013. And so, um, you know, technically going into our 12th year, but 11th year, last year was yeah. essentially our 10th year in yeah. terms of, uh, uh, having a brick and mortar or, you right. know, oper- and me operating full time. So again, uh, for those who may be joining late on WXR, uh, we're with Philip Ashley of Philip Ashley Chocolates. Um, you're in the midst of 12 years, 11 years in, you're in yeah. the midst of a kind of a shift of, sure. of what you're doing. Talk about it. It's super interesting. Talk yeah. about what your new emphasis is. Right. Um, just been a, you know, a decade of learning, you know, through again, successes, mistakes, and, and really, as the, the economy and the world has shifted and, um, you know, the, the globe is, is, has become more flat uh, from a uh, 
economy or a commerce standpoint. And so with that, just uh, getting a better understanding of who we are as a brand, how we market, how we produce and what I'm best at, you know, and realizing like, you know, my greatest commodity is commodity is that I make chocolate really, really well. Uh, and so getting back to that to where, you know, very high end, uh, more exclusive in terms of how we launch collections, how we make things more offered, um, redesigning the packaging, even redesigning the molds that the chocolates are made from. Uh, so again, uh, larger pieces, but more to create more surface area. Um, and so again, focusing heavily on B2B, uh, particularly uh, the hospitality industry, uh, we're working with hotels, but also working with luxury brands and doing collaborations. Uh, so just again, scaling, scaling back in a lot of ways, reducing our footprint, also making sure that we're as sustainable as possible in terms of how we source raw materials. So we're even doing more uh, on the continent of Africa, particularly in the West Africa region. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just, just a lot of shifts and tweaks to really just ultimately, so we're a better company Right. Um, and we serve our customers uh, a lot more effectively. Well, I want to come back to everything you just talked about. One weird question. Mm -hmm. um, how much when you make these decisions, is it you talk about changing the molds and changing sure. the surface area? And cha is it gut feel mm -hmm. and how much of it is hard market research data or is it a, a marriage? Of yeah, the I, think, I think it's a healthy marriage of the two. It's, yeah. It is a gut feel because I think a lot of entrepreneurs in particular artists you know, and just good business people trust their gut. And I think I had gotten away from that for a while. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, started chasing volume, so to speak, or trying to do things just to sell or just to make money. And it's like, well, that's not the best. I mean, we always obviously all want to, you know, have revenue and right. be profitable. But I, I right. got away from what, again, we were strongest at. And so right. kind of uh, pivoting back to that and then enhancing from there. When you were scaling up, was that much more consumer? It's like getting it more stores, of, getting yeah, more. Right. So then you're and the margins there are, are different. Yeah, are different <laughs> because, one, you're trying to appease a number of budgets, a number of pallets. Um, you're trying to make things that are more uh, cost effective for the end user or the buyer, yeah. particularly on a, a retailer yeah. uh, and that kind of thing. And I was like, well, this is really not um, how I want to approach chocolate making ultimately. And, and, yeah. and as the world of cocoa, you know, cocoa as a commodity is going up uh, yeah. in price, uh, you know, adjusting to that, but also saying, well, you know what, I really have always wanted to be you know, essentially the most luxurious chocolate brand on yeah. the market. And so yeah. I'm focusing on that now. It, it's funny, you talked about hospitality and I was, I, I travel a ton. I traveled a lot last year and this year. Yeah. And it struck me that, and it's not that I'm staying in super fancy hotels. I mean, mm -hmm. I have from time to time, but that's not the normal thing. Everybody's got chocolate now. Yeah. You know, yeah. and yeah. I mean, I'm old enough to remember when you would go in and if there was chocolate, it was the little, uh, it was the little uh, mint with right. the green foil. Right. The and, and I love those. The Andy's mints. Andy's mints. Yeah. Mints. yeah. Andy's yeah. Mints. Or some that knockoff. Right. It was, you know, Absolutely. it was a different promotion. Yeah. It was more of a motel. Used, it was a knockoff. Andy. Absolutely. So I love those. Those are fantastic. Thing. I did too. Yeah. But now it mm -hmm. is kind of specialty stuff and it is branded with the hotel. Sure. And I hadn't kind of clicked through that these companies are using things like that to, sure. you know, try yeah. to give you this experience. Well, now um, I literally was just reading a report today about the, you know, um, how inflation, what market it had markets it's affected and the yeah. ones that it hasn't. And hospitality is, is actually on a negative trend in, in a positive way. Like it's yeah. down, yeah. Uh, you know, it's not being impacted by the recession as much or inflation rather. Uh, yeah. and, and with that hotels, hospitality groups, they're really wanting to, you know, when you guys come and stay, you know, what all it's all details, yeah. you know, it's it every is. little thing yeah. matters. And it's the same thing with us. You know, one one detail impacts the other thing that impacts the biggest, uh, the greater experience. Talk, talk about some of the other if you, brands and places that you've you've done this kind of B two B stuff with. Yeah, um, one of our our biggest partners is Cadillac. Um, you know, they've been great for. We're actually going into our third year now, uh, working with them where we're designing collections for vehicles like Celestic, um, and really the emphasis for GM and for Cadillac is on their on the EV, uh, and so uh, we've been designing collections that are inspired by. 
uh, electricity, uh, as well as luxury and art. Uh, and so places like that, Montage, um, uh, which is a family of hotels, specifically Palmetto Bluff, uh, working with a resort in the Chesapeake Bay called Great Oak Manor, um, where they bring me in for tastings and things like that. So yeah. kind of a host of, or a range of, of companies. And we've got a few other things that we're working on. Um, that'll be coming out later in the year. And so, yeah. yeah. With Cadillac, so if, where would I, if I was a Cadillac owner or looking at buying a Cadillac, like how do they just like right. get into the, the right. weeds? So brands like, yeah, it? brands like that uh, specifically right now, one there, it's multifaceted, but uh, kind of the, the initial where we are at the moment is, you know, any market, anywhere Cadillac shows up from a marketing standpoint, be it US Open, be it, uh, ABFF or wherever they're going and the car is there, gotcha. uh, whichever, whether it's Escalade or Lyric or Celestic, um, they're bringing the chocolates and they're giving them to the media. They're giving them to the influencers and the guests that are attending. Um, and then as we continue to grow the footprint, uh, our footprint within Cadillac, you know, eventually as car vehicles are purchased, specific ones like the Celestic now, they're used with that. But that car is, you know, custom, like every inch of it is fully custom made to the buyer and that kind of thing. And so the box of chocolates corresponds to that. So it, it is. That's so interesting because uh, you, if you go see a car at. The, at some event or sure. something like, and I'm a car person, yeah. so you can sit in it, you can touch it, right. you can take a picture, right. you right. can't take any of it with you. Right. So if they've got this branded chocolate yeah. that is a great experience, that it just helps sort of take sure. something with you. And right, and it, and it really, and as you said, all of those other touch points and kind of uh, sensory aspects, now it's like, well, what does this car taste like? You know, and really <laughs> yeah. what the experience yeah. of driving yeah. tastes like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we're here with Philip Ashley, Philip Ashley Chocolates. Um, we've got a bunch more questions for him, but I want to take a moment to do a little housekeeping and remind everyone, I'm Eric Barnes. This is The Sidebar, which airs on WYXR 91.7 every Thursday at 1130. Focus on the community, arts, culture, everything in between. Also a podcast on the Daily Memphian Podcast or wherever you get your podcasts. Um, it's one of a number of podcasts we do at the Daily Memphian, including the Grizzlies podcast with Chris Harrington and Drew Hill, um, and Soundbites with Chris Harrington and Holly Whitfield. Soundbites also airs on WYXR every Thursday at 11, right before the sidebar. All of our podcasts are on the Daily Memphian site, as well as iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. I should remind everyone, um, WXR is a nonprofit, listener-supported radio station. So if you haven't donated, please consider at WYXR.org or download the WYXR app. You can also you can become a member. You get all kinds of member benefits. You can do a one-off donation. Um, and you can also get all the archives of the shows at, at both those locations. Uh, that's both the talk shows and the music shows with all the, the, the great DJs that, um, uh, that volunteer their time at WYXR. Um, let me also mention the podcast of Behind the Headlines, the TV show we do with uh, the folks over at WKNO every Friday. Um, that's available as a podcast wherever you get your podcast, but also including WKNO.org and the Daily Memphian site. Um, coming up soon on Behind the Headlines, like, we're in a bit of a time warp with pre-taping some things, but I believe we will have recently had or about to have one or the other. Public Works Director Robert Connect. Um, we've also got Superintendent um, Memphis Shelby County Schools, new Superintendent Marie Fagans coming on soon. Um, and recently we had Bill Hargrave, the president of U of M, on Behind the Headlines. Um, on the sidebar, we recently had Stephanie Ferrer with Vintage 901. Do you know Stephanie Ferrer mm -hmm. in the program? That was so yeah, fascinating. Yeah, I knew a little yeah. bit, but I'd never met her. Yeah. She's great. She does a great job. She yeah, is great yeah, people yeah, talking yeah. about wine and food and <laughs> her events. I think by the time this airs, her event will have happened. But you okay. learn more, huh. and then they've got a big event that's coming, um, a, a food event in the in the fall, and learn more about Vintage 901 and all the nice. stuff they do. It's very cool. Uh, we also recently had Lauren Kennedy on. Um, she is the uh, used to be at Urban Arts Commission forever, and is now uh, has owns and and um, runs her own art gallery, uh, Sheet Cake downtown, yeah. or actually in the medical district. Been wanting to check that out. Yeah, and uh, she's great. She was mm -hmm. a really great guest recently, and also coming up soon, we've got. Um, uh, Pedro Velas Velasquez, Pedro Velasquez, I said it correct. Um, he is the executive director of Life Talk, a really cool conversation about everything they're doing out in the community and their expansion into the Northside Project um, in North Memphis. But we are still here with um, uh, with Philip Ashley of Philip Ashley Chocolates. 
let's get into the the cocoa thing. Sure. Is a huge deal. Yes. Across the entire world of chocolate and desserts and so on. Right. The little I know is that costs are way up. Yes. It has always been a kind of difficult commodity in terms mm-hmm. of some of the politics in some of the countries right. where cocoa is, is really available at scale. Sure. What, but there's a whole lot more to it than that. Yeah, so what's interesting is, I think about five or six years ago, maybe a little bit before that, uh, and I can't remember the article, but an article came out that said that by 2030, um, that cocoa or chocolate would be around the price of diamonds in terms of <laughs> by weight and Don't stuff say like that. that. A lot so, of people right, know, very was, upset, at, like know, literally yeah. getting in their car well, and go well, buy a bunch yeah, of chocolate. Right yeah. Now. So, but but that, I and mean, I think it was just trying to give uh, a representation or an illustration that you know the rising cost of cocoa. And I mean, if you kind of go back, I mean. You know, we discovered or this thing was around since about 1530 um, yeah. in terms of uh, the way we see it now, um, you know, and then into the 17th century um, is when it really became kind of a, a, a luxury, so to speak, and, uh, for uh, consumerism. Uh, so but anyway, going to now, yes, uh, you know, 70 percent of the world's cocoa is coming out of the West African region, Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's gone up. And a lot of that is because countries like Ghana have said, well, listen, we're going to control the import and export of one of our cash crops. Our, uh, you know, and, and, and what's interesting, it's only about six, you say only, but only about 6% of their GDP, but that's still you kind of, that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think a lot of it is just becoming as, as sustainability and awareness around that has increased. Um, as you know, the accessibility to the commodity has changed. Um, the demand for it also helps to increase that. So all these things kind of working together, um, you know, and and there are a lot more people making chocolate, uh, but then there are a lot that are kind of scaling back. Some of the larger ones are, you know, not able to access as much and they're changing their dynamics. So, Yeah. yeah. Sustainability like define that when you're yeah. when you're trying to source and sure. that I can imagine be extremely difficult both to find to find right. cost effectively right. and to know it's truly been it wasn't a promise but it was actually sustainable. Right. Right. What is and, sustainably means what? Yeah, in short is making sure that the person that is responsible for, you know, growing, harvesting and um treating and or processing the the actual cocoa that ends up in my hands and ultimately in the customer's mouths um, is getting the most for their uh, for their labor, for their work. And it's making sure they're getting fair market value per kilo, per pound, um, you know, uh, and, and that's been the long fight, making sure child labor um, isn't slave labor and all those things. Because I, and I tell people a lot of times in countries like that, child labor is in all ways, you know, because if they're family members are working if if um, are in the fall or in helping that's one right. thing right. Um, but we're making sure that exploitation is not a part of that and that's both in uh, mistreatment physically and emotionally and mentally but also in the f- financial and especially financially and making sure that they're getting because billion hundred billion dollar plus industry we want to yeah. make sure that you know some of these farmers are getting you know less than a dollar yeah. Uh, for a kilo or a ton, you know, it's, 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 it's been egregious. And so, yeah. And, and right now, give or take, if you had to buy a kilo of mm-hmm. cocoa, how, sure. what does that cost you? So right now, a kilo, if, if on re on the retail market, you're going to spend per pound, uh, or f- per kilo. So two and a, 2.2 pounds, you're going to spend about 30 bucks, give or take. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so not cheap. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but thirty to uh, but, one but, to the but, person who harvests absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and then yeah. that's a huge. And actually, when you look at, they're getting pennies on the dollar, so it's more like a hundred yeah. to one, or yeah. you know, so literally. So um, that's what they're looking to change. Uh, and then also another thing, a lot of the younger uh, Africans and things aren't as interested, or they, ha- which I understand in a lot of ways, but ensuring that 
the processing because most of that has been done off continent or out of that's continent. the other dynamic that's right right yeah well it's like well let's go get the cocoa beans Load and then we'll go to a, france a ship and, and, send and it and the where? high value jobs and the high value work and the the, the increase in the value i'm sorry to interrupt but no, I, no, no, you're listen fine. To this fascinating yeah, you're thing on, on the economists about this the, the value that's put into it by refining right. and, and that's exactly. where all the money is and the people who did the really hard labor exactly are doing that pennies on the absolutely and okay. so all the things that are really associated with High, high revenue, profit margins are again done uh, outside of Africa right. or off continent. And yeah. so, yeah, and so bringing a part of that, and that's some of the things, I've, you know, the science, the engineering, even the art right. of making chocolate um, beyond just, because even the harvesting, that's still very manual. It's like they're yeah. literally chopping down cocoa pods one at a time with a machete still today. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. and, you know, there's some things that are still manual, like even in our shops, you know, everything's handcrafted. But at the same time, we're still charging a requisite dollar amount for yeah. that labor. Sure. So sure. Yeah. I feel like we're here in Crosstown in the atrium. I feel like if somebody walked by, they'd be like, they're doing a drug deal over there. Like, what are these guys <laughs> right. talking Kilos about? It's like suddenly it's Breaking Bad or something. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway, so. so it's chocolate, people. Yes, Stop hilarious. judging. Stop judging. <laughs> um, it is fascinating. I mean, right. the whole, that whole part yeah. of it is. Yeah. And then how do you know? here in Memphis sure. that what's claimed is true. Like, right. I, again, we're in the weeds, but I'm fascinated by that kind of thing. Is there, are there third parties that are certifying or are you just building Tons relationships? Tons of research, or? relationships, going over there, seeing for yeah. yourself. Um, work, and, and the goal is ultimately working directly with, you know, the farms, the plantations, the farmers, the, yeah. the families, the people who actually own the land yeah. where the uh, trees and the, and the cocoa it's coming from who and and seeing that more uh folks over there have the processing facilities so one of the things for instance that you're seeing out of ghana is that you really no longer can get a whole raw beans direct out of that country now it has to come to you semi-processed which means you're getting cocoa uh you're getting the powder the butter the liquor uh and the nibs so the components so they're taking the beans, they're fermenting them, they're roasting them, drying them, roasting them, uh, and semi-processed, meaning that they're not doing the full bean to bar, but they're carrying it forward to get the yeah. four major areas of what you would then, or I would do if to make the chocolate bars and the couverture primarily. Okay. Uh, but then things like cocoa butter that goes out into the beauty industry and all the other areas. And they're doing, you're seeing similar things with Shea because Shea, um the is like a nut yeah. that um is used in you know heavily in the beauty industry uh and so that's a big uh, another big one that's coming out of that region and again that's back to ghana saying we want to we want to own this part of the, the, the stream of this much farther because we right. want to have like, a, hey, a we're hand not in that with the high value parts of it precisely yeah. yes yes so interesting mm -hmm. um uh we got maybe four or five minutes left here okay. um uh question that Natalie Van Gundy had that is actually fascinating, which okay. is um, how do you ship chocolate in sure. summer, especially, and from, from and in and around Memphis, yes. especially, but really year round. Sure. Very carefully. But, yeah. uh, um, you know, well, one, thankfully we we're in a city that has a, a great uh, shipping company. You, you may have heard of it, FedEx. Yeah. Um, Once or twice. Uh, but in general, we, we, we've, we've worked with several though. I think the primary part that and even from the very beginning, I said, listen, I want to be able to make and sell chocolate 365 days. And so very early I knew, well, I got to find insulated uh, shipping containers and mailers. And so we have several layers of uh, packaging protection, if you will, and um, ice packs that are dry wicking so they don't the moisture on the outside doesn't damage the packaging on the inside of the actual chocolate box. And so just a lot of time, effort, research into, you know, what are the materials we need? Yeah. You know, what are the services that we need from a shipping standpoint? You know, can we get the best pricing possible? You know, we're a smaller operation than others. So, you know, corporate levels are different. Uh, but then when we're shipping for Cadillac, you know, we're, we're working in, in partnership with them. And so we're, you know, larger companies, yeah, they, they're definitely getting it overnight. But during the summer, even when you, you know, one of the things we say is, listen, you know, we have to charge this shipping um, for to for right. overnight and for two day 
because otherwise it'll be soup. And those yeah. that true, you know, if your birthday's in July, your birthday's in July, you got to get something. Right. There you go. <laughs> you know, somebody's going to want to send Natalie a, a gift in July. Well, it's, you Aww. know. That's they can't so nice. say, well, you know what? I can't. Well, she should have been born in December. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we want to make that available because, you know, anniversaries, yeah, just because, sure. you know, all the special occasions happen, yeah. you know, year round. Yeah. And, and, and how do I, I've not thought about this really important question, but like how do the, the big Hershey's and the Nestle's? They they're just doing the same thing, but at at a scale, massive scale. Yeah, yeah, that's wow. it. You know, and and again, you know, uh, freeze drying or uh, carbon dioxide right. or the the uh, dry ice and things yeah. like that. There are mul- there are multitude of uh, you know. We were working with a company where we were discussing making um, uh, peanut butter cups, and so those would be frozen. And then shipped, and then yeah. it's using the right type of uh, transport because yeah. there's all kinds of things that you can use, refrigerated trucks and such. So yeah, that I mean, it's just really combining those things because it gets hotter and hotter, and we know in Memphis it yeah. gets really yeah. hot. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Uh, when you this is one of these goofy questions I ask people, but I'm gonna do it anyway. If if you go somewhere and you want some kind of candy and it's not chocolate, yeah. what, what do you get? Oh man, so I I love gummy bears uh okay. in particular the uh albanese i think there's some of the best out there natalie just, van gundy the, you, yeah, you're speaking her language there you over go. There. well they're, they're some of my favorite the bears the worms anything they make really um yeah. uh, i think that's probably my go-to i'm a huge ice cream yeah i love ice cream gelato uh we've got a great gelato maker here sweet gelato yeah, sweet yeah. Magnolia. Sweet, yeah um, but yeah I, i'm a huge gummy bear fan huge uh ice cream fanatic and then this has chocolate in it, but uh, I think the two others, chocolate chip cookies, uh, are probably one of my biggest. Like yeah. I, anywhere I travel, I try to see what their chocolate chip cookies are like and their cinnamon rolls. Oh, cinnamon so, rolls. Okay. Cinnamon rolls, which is okay. not, not chocolate at all. And <laughs> that's probably my number one. Like, I love cinnamon rolls, whether it's the Pillsbury and the, the oh, pop-out don't, yeah, can. Oh, yeah, I mean, come to on. Cinnamon, come cinnamon on. Roll, Absolutely. Uh, to cinnamon or anything in between. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, if it's yeah. got cream cheese icing on it, I'm Where do we I'm have, oh, we had uh, Josh Burgess from uh, Lucy oh. J Bakery, uh, oh. had, and he brought some cinnamon rolls a couple weeks ago, love and they're fabulous. Love Just cinnamon fa- rolls. Yes. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. are really that's, good. That's those. definitely my go-to. Uh, with just a minute left, I always try to ask people, what was the first concert you went to? The, I was just talking about this the other day, for, so that's funny you asked. Literally, the first concert was uh, Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation. Nice. I think I was like 10 or 11, yeah. something like that. It was at the Mid-South Coliseum. Nice. Yeah, that's very nice. the very first full-on music that wasn't Muppets or Sesame yeah. Street, because we went to those too, but the f- actual full first music concert, Janet Jackson Rhythm Nation. Very cool, very cool. Um, all right, well, Philip, Ashley, Philip Ashley Chocolates. Thanks yes. so much for being here. Mother's Day around the corner. People so can much. learn more. They, even though you are doing this branded B2B thing, you yes. still, there's lots of still stuff able, on the side, all yeah, that kind of stuff. So I don't want to leave anybody that they can't get this stuff. But uh, yes. thanks so much for being here. We Thank really you so appreciate much. It. That is yes. all the time we have this week, though. If you missed any of the episode, you can get it at the Daily Memphian site, WYXR, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>